Hey all, so in this video, I'm going to tell you 10 questions which you can expect from Plan Biotechnology for this year DBT BJRF examination. So without any delay, let's get into the video. So first question is from genetically modified crops. So from genetically modified crops, definitely two questions you can able to expect. So you need to know which particular institute is responsible for uh, developing that particular genetically modified crop and why that particular crop has been genetically modified. So this question is first commercially released GM crop in India. Okay, at least you can't able to cover up the entire GM crop across the world. Just know in India what is going with regarding to GM crop research. So for this question, the correct answer is option number D. So first commercially released GM crop is cotton, which is expressing this crime one AC gene from Bacillus thuringiensis. Okay, so I'll be sharing you an important PDF file. So in this particular article, you can able to find a many notes for your exams. Okay, so here they have clearly given the genetically modified crops and why the particular crop has been genetically modified. So, some crop has been genetically modified to, to make them as a herbicide tolerant. Some crop they will be genetically modified to improve the product quality. At the same time, in this article, you can able to find the trans gene that is inserted. That is much more important. Okay, so please make a note on this particular article. Maybe I will be giving all the link of this particular article below. Okay, so so you need to know the recent thing so recent thing what i will be telling means recently on last like october 2022 uh, the government has announced like genetically modified mustard uh, can be cultivated in india so genetically modified mustard they had given the environmental clearance and currently gm mustard has been cultivated in india okay so you need to know about that particular gm crop it was manufactured by university of delhi only so please uh, know about more about the genetically modified mustard next is nif genes which encodes nitrogenous complex or uh, other enzymes they, so in which particular process is nif genes are involved so nif genes are involved in the nitrogen fixation so please make a note about the nitrogenous complexes what are the cofactors that are present in that particular complex okay with regarding to nif genes for example if you take this Klebsiella pneumonia which is a free living faculty to anaerobic nitrogen fixing bacteria so it totally have 20 NIF gene if you take if you ask me the function NIF HDK are encoding a nitrogenous subunit whereas other genes like E N U S V W X V Q they are encoding a protein which are involved in assembling and incorporation of various cofactor like iron and molybdenum ions into this particular nitrogenous subunit Whereas if you take this NIF EFG and NIF J genes, they will be encoding a protein related in relation to your electron transport chip. Okay, next is NIF A and NIF L gene, they are acting as a regulatory protein. So definitely these things you should study, friends. Next thing is isopentyl transferase is an enzyme which is involved in which particular plant hormone synthesis. So isopentyl transferase is involved in cytokine synthesis. Okay, so isopentyl transferase is a key regulatory enzyme playing a vital role in cytokine biosynthesis. Whereas if you take auxin biosynthesis, the enzyme which is involved in auxin biosynthesis is IAAM tryptophan to mono oxygenase. Okay, so plan hormone is again an, uh, another important topic on which again two questions you can able to expect. So I will be adding you few research article. So this is the article that I am studying from my BSc. So in this article you can able to find the nature of the particular plan hormone occurrence and also you can able to find out the complete function of that particular plan hormone. So if you study the 16 pages definitely you can score some good marks not only in DBT in recent times from one plan hormone, two to three questions are asked in CSAR gate examination. Okay, so I'll be giving you a link of this particular article also. Okay, so next question is with regarding to again same plant growth hormone NCED that is 96 epoxy carotenoid dioxygenase enzyme is involved. So this enzyme is involved in your abscisic acid biosynthesis. So in short form abscisic acid is called as ABA which is a stress hormone and is a plant growth inhibitor hormone. Okay, so this is a, a key regulatory step in abscisic acid plant is catalyzed by this 96 epoxy carotenoid dioxygenase. Why I am telling the word again and and sometimes they will be uh, asking you the correct abbreviation of this particular NCED and this enzyme will be cleaving your 9,6 xanthophyll to xanthoin which is a precursor of this abscisic acid. 
okay so please make sure about the uh, important precursor compound of various plant growth regulator okay so which particular precursor from which particular precursor the plant growth hormones are being produced so for which you can refer this particular article maybe i'll be giving the link of this article also here you can be able to find the hormone the active form of the particular hormone the function of the hormone and the precursor addition you can also able to get the receptor because these days if you take the dbt page of examination they are improving the toughness of the question paper they are increasing the difficulty level so you might be expecting the question regarding to receptor of that particular plant growth hormone so in this tabulator column you can revise for your examination because still you have only one week of time point so do revise the question that i'm going to tell you with regarding to plant biotechnology next is in an in vitro culture experiment the color of x plant turned brown just after 24 hours of subculturing this is due to okay so this is due to the release of phenolic compound from x plant so if the x plant uh, or the callus tissue if they are releasing phenolic compound means then the complete plant tissue culture media and the color of x plant will be started to turn brown in color so that's due to to the release of phenolic compound. So again, it's a next question is also a continuation of your previous question. The addition of activated charcoal to plant tissue culture medium is done in order to. Okay, so generally in the plant tissue culture media, they will be adding this activated charcoal because this activated charcoal they will be absorbing the toxins with them so that they will not allow the plant to absorb the, those toxic substances. Okay, so activated charcoal is added in order to reduce the phenolic oxidation process. So they will be absorbing the phenolic compound with them. At the same time, this activated charcoal is also helping indirectly in promoting the plant growth in plant tissue culture. Next is in tissue culture experiment, a student is Desire to have more differentiation of shoots, shoots, which of the following plant growth hormone ratio should be used? This is also an, again an important thing. Generally, oxygen is for differentiation of root and cytokine is for differentiation of shoot. So, for this particular question, they are asking they, he needs a more differentiation of shoot. In that case, he needs to employ high cytokine to oxygen ratio. That is, an intermediate ratio or equal quantity of oxygen and cytokine promotes callus development, whereas high ratio of oxygen and oxygen to cytokine promotes root regeneration whereas high ratio of cytokine to oxygen will be promoting shoot regeneration so here they are speaking about shoot differentiation where he needs to employ high cytokine to oxygen concentration next is the target protein for glyphosate okay so this glyphosate is commercially employed herbicide it is a systemic broad spectrum herbicide so currently only they had given approval to use them in agriculture sector and roundup is a trademark of that particular herbicide so this herbicide will be targeting the chance so uh, option c is correct so it will be targeting 5 enol pyruvyl sicumate 3 phosphate synthase in short form it is called as e Yes, P, yes. So, this particular enzyme play an important role in sicumate pathway which will be generating aromatic amino acids. Okay. So, the target protein for this particular herbicide is your 5-enol pyruvyl sicumate 3 phosphate synthase. Next is leaf abscission is a phenomenon regulated by the amount of oxygen and cyethylene. Which one of the following statement is correct regarding the amount of oxygen and ethylene during leaf abscession? So, you all should know oxygen, cytokine, gibberellin or cancerous plant growth promoter. They will be promoting the growth of plant. Whereas, if you take abscessic and ethylene, they are considered a plant growth inhibitor. They will be inhibiting the plant growth. Okay. So, here they are asking about leaf abscession. Okay. So, uh, for leaf abscession, there should be a reduced level of oxygen. But the, calm, uh, but the concentration of ethylene should be very high because ethylene will be promoting leaf abscession and ethylene is also involved in senescence. So, both ethylene and abscessic acid, they are involved in the process of leaf abscession. Okay. Next thing, in genetically modified mustard, male sterility is conferred by a DAS gene and which particular gene will be restoring the fertility of seeds? So the correct answer is that male sterility will be conferred by the Barney's gene and Barstar gene will be restoring the fertility. So as I mentioned you earlier, it's a genetically modified mustard species and it was developed by Professor Deepak from University of Delhi. The main aim of genetically modified mustard is that we, in, till now India is expect India is uh, importing the oil, edible oil from various other nations. So in order to reduce the India's demand 
demand for edible oil import they had developed this particular genetically modified mustard through the transgenic gene technology it consists of three gene one is bar gene another one is barnes gene another one is bar star gene so this barnes gene will be conferring male sterility barnes gene will be producing a product called rnas which will be degrading your tepetal layer surrounding the pollen sac so ultimately the pollen will not be developed okay next bar star gene will be restoring the ability to produce fertile seeds and next third gene is your bar gene which is responsible for producing this particular phosphonothrysin n acetyl transferase so the same mustard species it has also been resistant to your glucofusinate which is a phytoalaxin okay so you should also know about three gene that are incorporated in this particular mustard Next is vir gene are necessary for transfer of tDNA in host genome. The product of which one of the following genes is tightly associated with the 5 prime end of 3 DNA and helping nuclear targeting? The correct answer is vir D2. So you can refer this particular thing if you take vir A is a kinase protein and it's a phenolic sensor receptor. Vir G is a transcription activator. Both the vir A and vir G are expressed continuously, and vir gene will be transcribing all other vir genes. So if you take vir B, it is forming a T pilus and vir B along with vir D4, they will be forming a mating system whereas vir C is considered a helicase which will be unwinding a DNA and vir D1 is a topoisomerase. Okay, and next you can able to find vir B6 to B11, they will be forming a conjugation tubule whereas vir B1, B2, B5, B7, they are involved in forming a pilus. Next with regarding to vir D2, they have two functions. One is endonuclease function and next function is integrase function and this vir D2 they will be covalently attached in the 5 prime end of your tDNA via the phosphodiester bond. So it will be cutting the tDNA at right border thereby initiating the T strand synthesis and this vir D2 is also involved in your nucleo nucleus targeting. So vir D4 is a coupling protein and vir E1 is a chaperon protein and vir E2 is a single standard binding protein which will be protecting your tDNA when you, when you need get enter into plant cell from various kind of nucleases. Next is vir E2 gene and vir D4 gene they will be carrying this NLS nuclear plant nuclear localization gene. Okay, next is vir F gene function is that they will be ubiquitous, they will be degrading vir D protein and vir E protein inside the plant cell because inside the plant cell both the vir D and vir E is not required. So, vir F gene they will be degrading both the gene. That is vir H gene they are important in detoxifying harmful phenolic compound. If they are exceeding their concentration, sometimes they will be killing the target pack. So, this vir H is involved in detoxification of this harmful phenolic compound. Okay, so this vir D4. B3, B4, B11, they will be forming a ATP dependent translocation machinery. So, you can follow this particular thing. So, where D2, D2 will be forming a complex in 5 prime end of the tDNA. Next is the recent question has been asked in BARC examination. They had asked about specifically about where A and where GG. So, they are asking both the genes are considered to express but not transcribed by two compound system. And next option is that both the genes are considered to express and transcribed by two compound system. So, just pass this video and tell me the correct answer if you know. I had given option number A thinking that they are not following, they don't have any two component system. But correct answer is that both the genes are continuously expressed and they both are considered as a two component system. So, in this article, they have clearly given about that particular thing. So, we all know agrobacterium is uh, responsible for causing congal tumors in dicotyledon plant. And the virulent system that drives the tumor formation depends upon the ability of the H. Okay, so a vir A gene which will be having a histidine kinase domain. Okay, so when there is an inducing signal, it might be a phenolic compound or monosaccharide or low pH environment, a passphate group will be transferred from this particular histidine, that is histidine, histidine 474 in vir A kinase gene to a conserved aspartate residue, that is D52 region in the receiver domain of vir G. Okay, so the, then the vir G will be phosphorylated and it will be binding the promoter of vir G and it will be activating the transfer. So, both the vir A gene and vir uh, G gene, they are forming a two component system. Next, disarmed T.I. plasmid of agrobacterium does not result in Kongol phenotype since it does not possess. So, the disarmed T.I. plasmid, they don't have this IPT and IAAH genes with them. So, that's the reason why they can't able to induce a Kongol phenotype. So, that's why they are doing this disarmed procedure for a normal T.I. plasmid. They will be removing both the genes. 
okay next is with regarding to scop scotomorphogenesis so they'll be asking what are, which of the following is the characteristics of scotomorphogenesis Sc scotomorphogenesis means growing a plant or growing a seedling under dark condition so those seedlings are called as etiolator and they'll be having a long hypocortical the hypocortical will be fastly growing and they will be lean in shape there will be a presence of apical hook will be there and the cotyledons will be small in nature at the same time they will be closed in nature so these are the characteristic of the scotomorphogenesis process so these 10 questions are very much important if you pay attention if you study this 10 question definitely you can score some good marks on those questions that are asked in plant biotech so soon i'll be uploading some other topic regarding to cell biology biofilms i'll be try to upload it so please do subscribe to my youtube channel thank you friends thanks for watching this video